Do you think you could only retire once you are in your 60s or maybe a bit earlier at 55? While this might work for most, others are challenging this old narrative. And these days, many people are joining the FIRE movement, which helps them stop working much younger and only take on work they really want to do. In this video, I'll talk about the FIRE movement and the different pathways that you can take to reach FIRE or FI. Stick around until the end and I'll give you an update on where I am on this journey. FIRE, which stands for Financial Independence Retire Early, shows you how to live well while using less of the world's resources and saving much more of your income so you ultimately only work if you want to. It's all about having financial flexibility and ultimate time flexibility. The FIRE movement started in 1992 when authors Vicky and Joe introduced the concept in their book your money or your life. The book challenges readers to think about their money and values, what they are willing to trade in their lives to pursue more money. Retirement just means in, in the new definition that you have a choice. It's less about retiring and more about having the freedom to not have to rely on a job for money. Really about thinking about the kind of life that you want and seeing your money as a tool to enable that vision to come to life. The essence of the FIRE movement comes down to three main strategies. Save a lot more of your income than most people do, up to 70% by limiting spending. Yes, 70% is a lot to save. Then use that savings to invest in passive index funds. Step three, repeat. Well, how do they know they have reached FIRE? Here are the simple steps FIRE participants typically take. Number one, work out their FIRE number. They usually follow the traditional 4% rule. The 4% rule suggests that retirees can safely withdraw 4% of their next egg annually during retirement and their money should last for 30 years. For FIRE investors, this means their next egg times 4% equals their retirement spending. To calculate the FIRE number, which is the amount of assets they need to build, they use their annual retirement expenses divided by 4% or multiplied by 25. For example, if you budget $100,000 per year for your retirement lifestyle, you will roughly need 2.5 million to achieve FIRE. However, in a recent video, I questioned this rule of thumb and concluded that the 4% rule originally designed for a traditional retirement at age 60 might not suit early retirees who have a 40 to 50 year retirement horizon. If you want to explore various online calculators that can help you work out your fine number and run different Monte Carlo simulations to see if your NASDAQ work depleted prematurely, you can check out this video. Step two is save and invest. Once they know how much they need, they will save and invest, typically in passive index funds. The lazy portfolio is one approach, but there are other diversified portfolio strategies that you can adopt. And when their portfolio reaches their fine number, when their portfolio returns can totally cover the retirement expenses, they have the option to quit their day job, continue working if they like, or choose part-time work or start a venture. It's entirely up to them. Let's talk about a quicker way to figure out how many years it might take to reach FIRE. We'll simplify things and assume your current yearly expenses will be the same as your retirement spending. This method comes from Mr. Manmastage, a popular figure in FIRE community. If you haven't heard of him, Mr. Manmastage is Peter Adeni, a Canadian engineer who retired at 30 with 600,000 in investments and a mortgage-free house. Remember that 70% savings rate that we just mentioned earlier? If you can save 70% of your income and invest it, you could retire in just eight and a half years. Pretty cool, right? Now, let's see how different countries stack up with their average household savings rates using the latest data from the OECD. The average savings rate for Chinese people is 34.8%, and typical Aussie saves about 13% of their income, and Americans save about 12.4%, and people in Germany and France, they save about 11%. The savings rate in New Zealand is about 9.3%, average Canadian saves about 5.8%, and the lowest is the people in the UK, which is about 2%. If you can beat these savings rates, you'll be ahead of the game and on a faster track to fire. But of course, with the high cost of living and mortgage rates, it's not always easy. Still, every bit of extra savings gets you closer to financial freedom. Now, let's talk about the pros and cons of FIRE. The FIRE movement can bring you many things, such as obviously financial security, as your investments will look after your living expenses without requiring any of your active input. Number two is 
the time freedom. Once you achieve fire, you get to decide how you spend your days, and that includes working as well. You will be more likely less stressed. Say goodbye to a job that you don't like, early wake-ups, and a long commute. All of these can improve your mental health. But the fire movement isn't all rainbows and sunshine. If you underestimate your fire number, you could face unexpected healthcare costs or market downturns leading to a shortfall in funds. Well, you can always find a job, but it's a risk to consider. And fire movement is not for everyone. For those living paycheck to paycheck with little room for saving, the goal of fire can feel very unattainable. It also requires a willingness to cut unnecessary spending. So far, we've discussed the standard path to fire, which is essentially retiring as soon as possible. But there are many other approaches which we'll dive into below. The average household spends about 74,100 per year in both in the US and Australia. So for a traditional fire, you need around 1.8 million saved up. Another route to fire is called coast fire. This is when you have enough in your retirement accounts that without any additional contributions, your net worth will grow to support you at a traditional retirement age. In other words, you can coast into retirement. And people pursuing coast fire typically still work to cover their current costs, but don't need to save more for retirement. Once your net worth hits the coast fire milestone, you can either indulge yourself with your surplus income or take on a less stressful job. For example, if you save $182,000 by age 30, your portfolio can grow to 1 million by age 65 with a 5% annual return after inflation without adding more. Or you can consider barista fire. Barista fire is for those who don't plan to retire early but want to work less demanding or part-time jobs. The term barista comes from the idea that a job at Starbucks could provide enough extra income, plus they offer medical insurance for part-time workers. With Barista Fire, your portfolio partially supports you and you work part-time to cover the rest. To calculate your Barista Fire number, figure out how much you earn from your part-time job and subtract it from your annual living expenses. For example, if your living costs are $50,000 and you earn $15,000 from a part-time job, you would need $35,000 per year, 35,000 by 25, and you'll get 875,000. Or if you plan to have lower than average expenses in retirement, consider lean fire. This strategy is for minimalists who live frugally before and during retirement. Can you live on half the average household spending of $74,100 a year? If so, your lean fire number would be 900,000. Lean fire is the fastest way to retire early as long as you are willing to live frugally. Or if you dream of lavish vacations, lots of dining out and shopping in retirement, fat fire might be your goal. It requires saving and investing aggressively so you don't have to limit your spending in retirement. It's challenging since you are aiming for a high annual expenditure, but it can be the most rewarding. A typical fat fire number is 2.5 million with a $100,000 annual budget. It's the hardest level of fire to achieve, but arguably the most fun. Okay, let's get into the nitty gritty. How about you, Irene? Since your channel focuses on personal finance, investing and fire, you might be wondering which path I am taking. From the very early days, when we decided to embark on this journey, it became very clear that financial independence is more suitable for us than early retirement. So that's partially why we started our two channels, which we hope will ultimately become our hobbies after reaching five. Now, let's talk about our fire number. I don't fully agree with the traditional concept of frugality in the fire movement. I do believe in not consuming materialistic things to impress others, but why take the fun out of retirement by lowering the retirement budget? The thing is, if you still have to be frugal during retirement, you're not really eliminating the stress you experience while working. So by having a bigger budget during retirement, you can outsource errands and focus on activities you truly enjoy. The way I calculate my fine number is a bit different. Instead of using our household yearly spending divided by 4%, I use 3.5% to leave some room for unexpected market conditions. And this means multiplying 28 instead of 25. Wait, didn't you say the 4% is a terrible idea for early retirees? You're right. That's why this portfolio calculation only includes our five portfolio and not our superannuation, which 
we contribute to as much as we can for traditional retirement. I'm not going to share my portfolio details here because I know there are people I know in person who watch my videos and I don't want to evoke any jealousy or unnecessary judgment for our choices, but I do provide a monthly update on my five portfolio on YouTube membership and Patreon. Big shout out to the patrons for supporting my work. Okay, savings rates. Our savings rate was pretty good at around 50 to 60% last year, but it has dropped to about 30% due to our older child starting private school this year, and we are co-funding a software startup at the same time. So hopefully we'll get back to the 60% range soon. Just like personal finance, your fire journey is personal. Pursuing early retirement isn't just for the ultra rich. With the right intentional planning, you can achieve fire and not have to work on the jobs that you don't like. So what's your fire number? If you reach fire today with your portfolio generating $100,000 a year for you passively, what would you do? How do you feel about the fire movement in general? Leave your comments below so that I know you are one of the few watching till the end. My name is Irene. I'll see you next week. Bye.